promotional ISL, which is the name I use for my production company, Go Pro Solo Entertainment. Uh, my legal name is Heather Gillespie. My phone number is 312-772-3193. Um, and I've outlined on this per request a list of all of my social medias uh, that I've had since the date of the occurrence. Uh, March 6th, we're in the chapel. Welcome. Um, we've gone to everyone on the earth that is not God for assistance in this situation, and we have not received any assistance in this situation. So we're going to God. Um, and I wrote this in a prayer request that I'd like to share. Uh, today is March 6, 2023. Dear God, and any and all authorized servants of God, beginning in May 2019, two weeks prior to release of my then husband, Dylan Smith, and mate number Y12173 from the IDOC, and several years following, an officer named David Shepard extorting me into a corner and being caught up by IA, Internal Affairs, meaning I was extorted by this officer. Uh, Internal Affairs got involved um, and it was supposed to have been resolved. It was in 2016. Um, after that, I began to be targeted by a series of undesirable, sometimes violent attacks. I'm a mother to three beautiful, amazing children, Viviana now 16, Louis now 15, and Alexis now nine. Well, my son will be 15 next week, his birthday's next week. I was the primary custodial parent and still am, on, according to any court documents, of all three children and from each of their births, they've lived with me a minimum of four to five days a week, most of every week. After a long-term relationship and marriage attempts failed with Lewis, the big kid's father, and Orlando, the father of Alexis, I was so happy and grateful to meet and fall in love with Dylan who blatantly lied and tricked me into believing he had only the previous arrest. Um, that he had only been arrested once previous to his arrest. Tricked me into believing we could build a beautiful life together. Um, tricked me into believing we had mutual interest in creating production company, creating fitness companies, and serving people for a profit in those arenas. Tricked me into believing that we could have a beautiful life together of happiness and abundance. For myself, for him, and most importantly for my children. Due to the fact that Dylan was working with an agreement um, with, with the state of Illinois that I was directly included in only on negotiation and discussions with Wayne um, and another um, woman state's attorney, and in connecting the dots between him, him, Dylan, Wayne, the state, and both of our lawyers, Sam Worley and Nick Albuquerque. Uh, anyways, due to the deal in place between all of those people, between the state of, and Dylan, um, and other authorities blatantly ignoring um, the phone recordings, the play-by-play -play accounts of my being groomed, heavily coerced, persuaded at best into sexually, into being sexually trafficked, among other particularly heinous abuses. Um, none of the abuse has received any attention or assistance. Uh, I'm assuming that it's because that deal was in place and they wanted him to complete the deal um, and that addressing any of the abuses taken against me would have gotten away but I don't have proof of that. I've gone to the state 10, maybe 20 times. Uh, they refuse to even speak or acknowledge <coughs> anything that I've gone through. Uh, somehow I survived all of that that took place from 2015 to 2019 during the time of his imprisonment. I somehow managed to survive the relationship with only minor traumas having been inflicted, i.e. rape, robbed multiple times, and overwhelming amounts of sexual degradation and other dehumanizing behaviors. No big deal, right? Um, it is also important to note that I was neither included nor considered in planning the deal specifics or in trusting in the state of Illinois or Dillon. Um, I was blind. I was blindly being led by both the state and Dillon, and I was doing my best to trust them both. It's also important to note that in addition to all of those abuses documented on those recorded phone calls, I can also provide a, a clearly articulated and extremely chaotic account to medical staff and have provided this to medical staff at Northwestern here, at Rush, at Elmhurst Hospital, at Del Noor, at my private physician's office, Dr. Solani, who I've been seeing on a month by month basis for the past 10 to 13 years. Um, I have been as open and candid as possibly could be. It seemed like each attempt at finding help seemed more urgent and desperate. Every time I went to healthcare workers or law enforcement, I was more and more freaked out. 
uh, and I was typically met with a melancholy uh, response of indifference. No one really seemed like they wanted or could help me in any way, nor did they seem surprised by the sexual abuses or robberies or physical assaults. Um, now, since the time of Dylan's release, May of 2019, and prior to that, I've never been victimized in any physical way ever in my life. Um, but prior, um, so since the time of his release, I've been blatantly called out as a rat by numerous dangerous people, jumped and stabbed by three women with screwdrivers 11 times, taken by ambulance to Bollinger Hospital, beaten by a man with a tire iron, my own tire iron out of the backseat of my car, resulting in the need for staples in my head and an inpatient hospital stay, as well as stalking in real life, as well as online. I've been split slated to go in by a falsely portrayed uh, narrative run by a reality TV show in cahoots with people who I thought were my real true friends. People who I opened my door, my home, my refrigerator to numerous times who in hindsight have not been there for me in any way. Um, with, besides the show and my multiple business entrepreneurial projects being destroyed or at best severely delayed, I've also been unlawfully evicted twice with rental receipts and lease agreements in hand and subsequently sexually assaulted and abused multiple times. After reporting each of those assaults against me, I was, neither, uh, I was either ignored, attacked again, placed in custody, or laughed at and blatantly called crazy. Have you ever gone into a police station and said, I've just been sexually assaulted, and then you're in turn arrested, placed in handcuffs, and forced to bond out for $400? You call six months later for an update on the sexual assault, and you're told by Detective Rojas with Lombard Police, quote, no investigation has been conducted. Very sad. Um, since the time of increased violence, 2019, the children who primarily lived with me their entire lives have been staying with their fathers, uh, but as the primary parent and mother having the highest level of education, most experience, fitness, medical, and wellness background, along with just cleaning, cooking, and doing all of these things for my children as their mother, um, anyone could see after a short period of observation that they belong with me and that the best place for them is with their mother, with me, who loves them very much. The physical property, my car, a fully paid off Cadillac CTS, my home, clothes, furniture, electronics, shoes, makeup, lighting, uh, and other equipment used for production or just general upkeep of the home, and even my entire or partial prescription has all been stolen repeatedly, and I'm talking at least five to 10 times. Never has it been replaced. I have documented all of this with video, photo, and and witness testimony on all the Instagrams that I've created since this time. If you go to the FTR sections, you can see many, many, many samples and examples in real life of me being chased, physically stalked, beaten, um, and hospitalized for the many abuses that have occurred. Yet regardless of how many police reports have been filed and how many times I've filed petitions with the state of Illinois, both electronically as well as in person, a court date has still never been assigned and an investigation still has never been conducted. From my understanding, uh, federal law requires any local um, legal municipality to provide a court date within 30 days from the time one is requested. Again, I've done so six times, both in person as well as electronically, and there are videos posted on my Instagram with me in the courthouse filing the paperwork and holding the filed petitions in my hand. They still have never given me a court date. Four years of this, four years, I've gone every four to six months and filed a new petition. I've called two to 300 times a month after the immediate period of time that I filed. Um, I get nowhere. I either get hung up on or blatantly lied to. Um, <clears throat> Again, please visit the FTR sections of any of these Instagram accounts for more examples, many, many samples in real life of how these abuses have occurred and how they've affected me subsequently. Um, I'm very confused as to how 16 police reports minimum have been filed with zero investigation having been conducted. I'm very confused as to how six in-person petitions have been filed for a court date with zero court dates being assigned and zero resolution almost four full, full years later 
were in March 2023. I was separated unlawfully from my children 11-24-2019. Um, again, these items discussed are barely grazing the surface of the abuse that I've endured. Um, I could literally write a hundred of these pages detailing various abuses and never re having repeated myself and still have abuses left over. I have endured over and over during this period of time. I have also kindly and respectfully requested assistance over and over during this period of time. I have also freaked out and lost my temper and yelled and screamed for assistance during this period of time. No assistance has been provided. Also during this time, I have even obtained 20 jobs, regular taxed jobs since 2019 um, including in the, in the industries and sectors of medical, fitness, renewable energy, sales and marketing, as well as food service. Um, at each, I have been chased, harassed, or bullied out after only a few weeks and after receiving only positive praise. I have been sleep deprived, days on end, starved, exposed to cold for prolonged periods, exposed nude, forced to have sex, raped, beaten, and more. My body, mind, soul, and heart are exhausted. Please, God, restore me, restore my life. Bring me back from this evil space I've been left in. And lastly, it's also important to note that prior to being targeted in 2015, I worked for more than five years here at Northwestern Hospital, proving not only am I intelligent and capable, but also completely sane. The slander of being falsely labeled as crazy to silence my testimony of abuse has been equally damaging on my mental health as the physical attacks. I need sleep. I need rest. I need peace. Thank you for listening. Uh, this is basically, there's so much more, like I said, but um, just for now, I just want to keep on documenting and circulating some, some fact-based fact information about my journey. Um, we've been outside for another uh, 15 days. I'm sick. I'm so sick. My ears are in excruciating pain. I have yellow mucus coming out of both my nose as well as my throat. Um, and we've been sleeping in stairwells or not sleeping at all. Uh, I, need, I need rest. I need food. I need my children and my family. And I need to know uh, how the fuck any of this has been, you know, permitted to continue for now again going on four years that's eight years of service for you people in a group that i never belonged in to begin with i'm not residual damage to your fucking case thank you Let's sit here.